Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm in the studio and we are gonna be working on a miniature tabletop garden with kind of a woodland theme. I've got some really neat plants I've been holding on to since early this spring. I noticed when I was down at the garden center one at the time, many times I was down there, that they had a line of really tiny hostas. So I snagged them and I'm so glad I did. I knew I would want to use them in some sort of small garden and I think today's the day. I've got probably more than I need for this garden, but I tend to over prepare. It's much nicer when I'm into the project to have too much than not enough. We will be using the hot glue gun quite a bit today. I've got some air plants, some really pretty mushrooms, gold mushrooms that I picked up at Joann's early this spring. They might look kind of neat, that little touch of shine in with these pieces of driftwood and more rustic items. This is gonna be the base of our garden right here. It's a cookie sheet. So we're gonna be covering it with all kinds of pretty stuff, moss, and I'll probably go grab some pine cones and stuff like that. Uh, but it'll be watertight, so ma no matter where we set this garden, whether or not we use it inside for a little while or put it outside on the table, it'll be watertight and will protect our surface. And then I've got a whole bunch of other kinds of moss right here. Forest moss, which has got kind of more of a brown, natural kind of look. We've got oak moss, which is really neat texture. Uh, preserved forest moss, which has got a little bit more of a deep green color. And then I've got moss mats, which is what we're going to be using a lot to cover like the infrastructure. For our plants here, some really cool ones. So this is called Hosta Pandora's Box. Four to six inches tall, five inches wide. Isn't that cool? Has a little bit of hard water staining on it, but not bad. I love the variegation and the fact that it stays so small. There's actually multiple plants in here. So if we wanted to separate them and pot them in smaller pots, we could do that. How many of them are there in here? Looks like two really good clumps. There is a deer fern here. This one actually wants to get a little bit bigger, a foot to a foot and a half by a couple feet wide, but they do really well and stay small in arrangements like this for a long time. We've got a leptinella, Platts black, one to three inches tall, and this one will spread out in your garden if you want it to, but isn't that a neat texture? Very woodland-esque. Carex, Evercolor Everest, really pretty white variegation, very fresh looking grass, I love that. There's a hosta called Curly Fries. Isn't that cool? It's got kind of the wavy edges. This is like the tiny version of a wee without variegation. Wee is, the wee hosta is prettier than this one, I think, but this one stays smaller and it's a little bit thinner, better use for this garden, I think. And then we've got a hosta called Blue Mouse Ears. Oh, the poor thing has hard water. That's the problem with our overhead watering around here. That's what happens. But this one stays small, six inches, six to 12 inches tall, 12 inches wide. And then I've got a little uh, lemon cypress right here. Anyway, I have no idea what I'm gonna use in this garden, but I think that's a good start. And then for air plants, we have a capitata peach. Doesn't that look cool on the driftwood? Then we've got, this is called a eranthos amethyst. Really pretty. And then this one is a brachycolis. It's got some red in it, which I like. Need to groom it though. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is just hot gluing some moss and other things around this pan, setting my driftwood on it, and then I'm going to try to disguise the pots that these plants are in. I may not even repot them. I'm just gonna cover them with moss and just set them around the driftwood. So it's a really simple garden. It doesn't really involve a lot of extra potting or um, like tearing things apart. It's just kind of masking the infrastructure and then putting it all together. So anyway, I think what we'll do is just put it together and then I'll show you the results in the end.
right guys, I think it turned out so fun. I used way more plants than I had anticipated, um, but I just kind of like, I don't know. I just got carried away once I got started with it. I did not use the mushrooms because they looked off. Um, I think they made it look almost dry, like there was a dryness about them. I don't know how or why, but anyway, so this whole thing is watertight because it's on that cookie sheet. So I can water everything freely without worrying about wrecking my surface, which is the best part about this. And they're pretty much, I think they're all low light plants. They can all handle low light. So this is a very versatile um, centerpiece because oftentimes where you're putting centerpieces where you're sitting, it's in a shaded spot because we don't want to sit in the full sun either. So um, finding things that do really well in that sort of situation can be a little bit tricky. And I think this is a really fun um, alternative, I guess, to just a potted arrangement. And I thought while I was making this, you could really scale it down to like little individual saucer size and you could make like little centerpieces for an event. Wouldn't that be cool? just to have a bunch of driftwood uh, hosta centerpieces with a bunch of moss. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six of these plants are in their pots. And I took that moss mat and just hot glued it to the outside and just nested them down on this container. So it's very easy that way. Um, I did utilize all three of the air plants. So those will need a little bit different care in that we'll mist those or soak them. Here we usually soak them um, once or twice a week. And so they're easy. I can just take them right out, put them in the sink and then put them out to dry upside down so that the water doesn't, you know, settle in the crown and rot them out. Um, and then we just pop them right back down into the arrangement. So that's very easy. Now one type of hosta, uh, let's see, let me spin it a little bit. So you can see like there's one right here. Ooh. Spin it all the way around. There's one right here. There's one tucked in here. Those all came out of the same container and I was able to split them apart. In fact, like this one here is three little hostas. I could have split even further. And what I did was essentially like a little kokodama um, in that I separated them, tucked a little soil around each of their individual root balls and then covered them in moss. And that way I could really manipulate those root balls and get them to fit in smaller areas. But again, I can water those easily because they're sitting on the cookie tray. Um, I used a few different types of moss in here and I think you might be able to see all three types here from, I don't know that which side is actually the front here. I actually think it looks kind of good like that from that angle. Um, but I used the moss mat first of all, and then this is the oak moss here. This is the, uh, and the oak moss has kind of more of like a, a solid, it's not as uh, fluffy, I guess, so it adds a different texture that's really nice. And then this stuff right here that's around this hosta, this is preserved forest moss, which has a very dyed look to it, like it's been dyed green. Um, and that way it does maintain its color, but it does have kind of an artificial look to it. So I tried to mix in a different brand's forest moss. In fact, let me show you. So this is called, this is Syndicate brand. This is what the forest moss looks like right here. So it's very, it's like a very vibrant, more emerald type of green. And then we've got super moss, forest moss, which has a completely different look to it. And I like having the variation. I do like having some more that's a little bit more of a deep green, but I felt like mixing these two together gave it more of a natural appearance. Um, so I do like that. And then I did have a few pine cones from around our blue spruce tree outside. I think that's it to this garden. So it's going to be going, I, I'm kind of anticipating it going on the kitchen table or the gray concrete table we have near our kitchen outside. I might put it though on our kitchen island for just like a week or so. These plants won't love it inside because they don't get the proper airflow and all that. But I think I could get away with it for just a little while. And then it'll be outside either on that gray concrete table or um, on a table up front by our front door. And I think I'll probably check it for water a couple times a week, but it'll again be protected and in a shady spot so it shouldn't dry out too fast but I just thought that this was such a fun idea and totally scalable to whatever you have like if you have a little piece of driftwood you could do a smaller one if you want to do a great big table runner type thing you could do that you could line a bunch of cookie sheets up and create this amazing I, I could see that like for a fun outdoor dinner party if you really wanted to put in a lot of effort you could do a huge long kind of running tablescape like this. So anyway, fun project to do in the studio on a hundred plus degree day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you give it a try, tag me on social media so I can see it because I'd love to see uh, how yours turns out. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.